Mimamsa is a Sanskrit word that means reflection or critical investigation and thus refers to a tradition of Brahmanical thought which reflected on the meanings of certain Vedic texts. This tradition is also known as Purva Mimamsa because of its focus on the earlier Purva Vedic texts dealing with ritual actions, and similarly as Karma Mimamsa due to its focus on ritual action karma. It is one of six Vedic affirming astika schools of Hinduism. This particular school is known for its philosophical theories on the nature of dharma, based on hermeneutics of the Vedas, especially the Brahmanas and Samhitas. The Mimamsa school was foundational and influential for the Vedantic schools, which were also known as Atara Mimamsa for their focus on the later Atara portions of the Vedas, the Upanishads. While both earlier and later Mimamsa investigate the aim of human action, they do so with different attitudes towards the necessity of ritual praxis. Mimamsa has several sub schools, each defined by its epistemology. The Prabhakara sub school, which takes its name from the 7th century philosopher Prabhakara, described the five epistemically reliable means to gaining knowledge pratyaksa or perception, anumana or inference, upamana, by comparison and analogy, arthapati, the use of postulation and derivation from circumstances, and sabda, the word or testimony of past or present reliable experts. The Bhatta sub school, from philosopher Kumarila Bhatta, added a sixth means to its canon. Anupalabdi meant non perception, or proof by the absence of cognition, e.g., the lack of gunpowder on a suspect's hand. The school of Mimamsa consists of both atheistic and theistic doctrines, but the school showed little interest in systematic examination of the existence of gods. Rather, it held that the soul is an eternal, omnipresent, inherently active spiritual essence, and focused on the epistemology and metaphysics of Dharma. For the Mimamsa school, dharma meant rituals and social duties, not devas, or gods, because gods existed only in name. The Mimamsakas also held that Vedas are eternal, authorless, and infallible. That Vedic vidhi, or injunctions and mantras in rituals are prescriptive karya or actions, and the rituals are of primary importance and merit. They considered the Upanishads and other texts related to self-knowledge and spirituality as subsidiary, a philosophical view that Vedanta disagreed with. Mimamsa gave rise to the study of philology and the philosophy of language. While their deep analysis of language and linguistics influenced other schools of Hinduism, their views were not shared by others. Mimamsakas considered the purpose and power of language was to clearly prescribe the proper, correct, and right. In contrast, Vedantins extended the scope and value of language as a tool to also describe, develop and derive. Mimamsakas considered orderly, law-driven, procedural life as central purpose and noblest necessity of dharma and society, and divine theistic sustenance means to that end. The Mimamsa school is a form of philosophical realism. A key text of the Mimamsa school is the Mimamsa Sutra of Jaimini. Terminology Mimamsa, also romanized Mimamsa or Mimamsa, means, "...reflection, consideration, profound thought, investigation, examination, discussion." In Sanskrit. It also refers to the "...examination of the Vedic text," and to a school of Hindu philosophy that is also known as Purva Mimamsa prior. Inquiry, also karma mimamsa, in contrast to atara mimamsa, posterior inquiry, also jnana mimamsa, the opposing school of Vedanta. This division is based on classification of the Vedic texts into karmakanda, the early sections of the Veda treating of mantras and rituals, samhitas and brahmanas, and the jnana kanda dealing with the meditation, reflection, and knowledge of self, oneness, Brahman, the Upanishads. Between the Samhitas and Brahmanas, the Mimamsa school places greater emphasis to the Brahmanas, the part of Vedas that is a commentary on Vedic rituals. Donald Davis translates Mimamsa as the desire to think, and in colloquial historical context as how to think and interpret things. In the last centuries of the first millennium BCE, the word Mimamsa began to denote the thoughts on and interpretation of the Vedas, first as Purva Mimamsa for rituals portions in the earlier layers of texts in the Vedas, and as Atara Mimamsa for the philosophical portions in the last layers. Over time, Purva Mimamsa was just known as the Mimamsa school, and the Atara Mimamsa as the Vedanta school. Mimamsa scholars are referred to as Mimamsakas. Darsana philosophy central concerns 
Mimansa is one of the six classical Hindu darsanas. It is among the earliest schools of Hindu philosophies. It has attracted relatively less scholarly study, although its theories and particularly its questions on exegesis and theology have been highly influential on all classical Indian philosophies. Its analysis of language has been of central importance to the legal literature of India. Ancient Mimansa's central concern was epistemology, pramana, that is, what are the reliable means to knowledge. It debated not only, how does man ever learn or know, whatever he knows, but also whether the nature of all knowledge is inherently circular, whether those such as foundationalists who critique the validity of any justified beliefs and knowledge system make flawed presumptions of the very premises they critique, and how to correctly interpret and avoid incorrectly interpreting Dharma texts such as the Vedas. It asked questions such as, what is Devada God? Are rituals dedicated to devadas efficacious? What makes anything efficacious? And, can it be proved that the Vedas, or any canonical text in any system of thought, fallible or infallible, svata pramanya, intrinsically valid, if so, how? And others. To Mimansa scholars, the nature of non empirical knowledge and human means to it are such that one can never demonstrate certainty, one can only falsify knowledge claims, in some cases. According to Francis Clooney, a professor at Harvard Divinity School specializing on Hinduism, the Mimansa school is, "...one of the most distinctively Hindu forms of thinking, it is without real parallel elsewhere in the world." The central text of the Mimansa school is Jamini's Mimansa Sutras, along with the historically influential commentaries on this sutra by Sabara and by Kumari Labada. Together, these texts develop and apply the rules of language analysis such as the rules of contradiction, asserting that one must not only examine injunctive propositions in any scripture, but also examine the alternate related or reverse propositions for better understanding. They suggested that to reach correct and valid knowledge it is not only sufficient to demand proof of a proposition, it is important to give proof of a proposition's negative as well as declare and prove one's own preferred propositions. Further, they asserted that whenever perception is not the means of direct proof and knowledge, one cannot prove such non-empirical propositions to be true or not true. Rather one can only prove a non-empirical proposition as false, not false, or uncertain. For example, Mimansakas welcome not only the demand for proof of an injunctive proposition such as Agnihotra ritual leads one to heaven, but suggest that one must examine and prove alternate propositions such as Ritual does not lead one to heaven. Something else leads one to heaven. There is heaven. There is no heaven. And so on. Mimansa literature states that if satisfactory, verifiable proof for all of such propositions cannot be found by its proponents and its opponents, then the proposition needs to be accepted as a part of a belief system. Beliefs, such as those in the scriptures Vedas, must be accepted to be true unless its opponents can demonstrate the proof of validity of their own texts or teachers these opponents presume to be prima facie justified, and until these opponents can demonstrate that the scriptures they challenge are false. If they do not try to do so, it is hypocrisy, if they try to do so, it can only lead to infinite regress, according to Mimansikas. Any historic scripture with widespread social acceptance, according to Mimansaka, is an activity of communication and is accepted as authoritative because it is socially validated practice, unless perceptually verifiable evidence emerges that proves parts or all of it as false or harmful. Mimansakas were predominantly concerned with the central motivation of human beings, the highest good, and actions that make this possible. They stated that human beings seek neuroticia pretty unending ecstatic pleasure, joy, happiness in this life and the next. They argued that this highest good is the result of one's own ethical actions dharma, that such actions are what the Vedic sentences contain and communicate, and therefore it important to properly interpret and understand Vedic sentences, words and meaning. Mimansa scholarship was centrally concerned with the philosophy of language, how human beings learn and communicate with each other and across generations with language in order to act in a manner that enables them to achieve that which motivates them. The Mimansa school focused on dharma, deriving ethics and activity from the karma kanda rituals part of the Vedas, with the argument that ethics for this life and efficacious action for svarga heaven cannot be derived from sense perception, and can only be derived from experience, reflection and understanding of past teachings. Sabara, 2nd century Mimansa scholar According to Daniel Arnold, Mimansa scholarship has striking affinities 
with that of William Alston, the 20th century Western philosopher, along with some notable differences. The Mimonsic is subjected to a radical critique. More than 2,000 years ago, states Francis Clooney, the notions such as God, the sacred text, the author, and the anthropocentric ordering of reality. Topic: <inaudible> Epistemology. In the field of epistemology, later Mimamsakas made some notable contributions. Unlike the Naya or the Vaisheshika systems, the Prabhakara sub-school of Mimamsa recognizes five means of valid knowledge SKT, pramana. The Bhatta sub-school of Mimamsa recognizes one additional sixth, namely Anuapalabdi, just like Advaita Vedanta school of Hinduism. These six epistemically reliable means of gaining knowledge are Pratyaksa Main article, Pratyaksha Pratyaksa pratyaksia means perception. It is of two types in Mimansa and other schools of Hinduism, external and internal. External perception is described as that arising from the interaction of five senses and worldly objects, while internal perception is described by this school as that of inner sense, the mind. The ancient and medieval Indian texts identify four requirements for correct perception, indriyarthasanikarsa direct experience by one's sensory organs with the object, whatever is being studied, aviapadesya non-verbal, correct perception is not through hearsay, according to ancient Indian scholars, where one's sensory organ relies on accepting or rejecting someone else's perception, avyabhakara does not wander, correct perception does not change, nor is it the result of deception because one's sensory organ or means of observation is driven drifting, defective, suspect and vyavasayatmaka definite, correct perception excludes judgments of doubt, either because of one's failure to observe all the details, or because one is mixing inference with observation and observing what one wants to observe, or not observing what one does not want to observe. Some ancient scholars proposed, unusual perception, as pramana and called it internal perception, a proposal contested by other Indian scholars. The internal perception concepts included pratibha intuition, samanyalakshana pratyaksa a form of induction from perceived specifics to a universal, and nyanalakshana pratyaksa a form of perception of prior processes and previous states of a topic of study by observing its current state. Further, some schools of Hinduism considered and refined rules of accepting uncertain knowledge from pratyaksa pramana, so as to contrast nirnaya definite judgment, conclusion from anajavasaya indefinite judgment. Topic. Anumana Main article, Anumana Anumana, Anumana means inference. It is described as reaching a new conclusion and truth from one or more observations and previous truths by applying reason. Observing smoke and inferring fire is an example of Anumana. In all except one Hindu philosophies, this is a valid and useful means to knowledge. The method of inference is explained by Indian texts as consisting of three parts, pratijna hypothesis, hichu a reason, and drishtanta examples. The hypothesis must further be broken down into two parts, state the ancient Indian scholars, sadhya that idea which needs to proven or disproven and paksha the object on which the sadhya is predicated. The inference is conditionally true if sapaksha positive examples as evidence are present, and if vipaksha negative examples as counter evidence are absent. For rigor, the Indian philosophies also state further epistemic steps. For example, they demand vyapti, the requirement that the hichu reason must necessarily and separately account for the inference in all cases in both sapaksha and vipaksha. A conditionally proven hypothesis is called a nigamana conclusion. Topic. Upamana Main article, Upamana Upamana means comparison and analogy. Some Hindu schools consider it as a proper means of knowledge. Upamana, states Lochtefeld, may be explained with the example of a traveler who has never visited lands or islands with endemic population of wildlife. He or she is told, by someone who has been there, that in those lands you see an animal that sort of looks like a cow, grazes like cow but is different from a cow in such and such way. Such use of analogy and comparison is, state the Indian epistemologists, a valid means of conditional knowledge, as it helps the traveler identify the new animal later. 
The subject of comparison is formally called upamayam, the object of comparison is called upamanam, while the attributes are identified as samanya. Thus, explains Monier Monier Williams, if a boy says, Her face is like the moon in charmingness. Her face is upamayam, the moon is upamanam, and charmingness is samanya. The 7th century text Bhattakavya in verses 10.28 through 10. 63 discusses many types of comparisons and analogies, identifying when this epistemic method is more useful and reliable, and when it is not. In various ancient and medieval texts of Hinduism, 32 types of upanama and their value in epistemology are debated. Arthapati <laughs> <laughs> Arthapati Arthapati means postulation, derivation from circumstances. In contemporary logic, this pramana is similar to circumstantial implication. As example, if a person left in a boat on river earlier, and the time is now past the expected time of arrival, then the circumstances support the truth postulate that the person has arrived. Many Indian scholars considered this pramana as invalid or at best weak, because the boat may have gotten delayed or diverted. However, in cases such as deriving the time of a future sunrise or sunset, this method was asserted by the proponents to be reliable. Another common example for arthapati found in the texts of Mimamsa and other schools of Hinduism is, that if, Devadatta is fat, and, Devadatta does not eat in day, then the following must be true, Devadatta eats in the night. This form of postulation and deriving from circumstances is, claim the Indian scholars, a means to discovery, proper insight and knowledge. The Hindu schools that accept this means of knowledge state that this method is a valid means to conditional knowledge and truths about a subject and object in original premises or different premises. The schools that do not accept this method, state that postulation, extrapolation and circumstantial implication is either derivable from other pramanas or flawed means to correct knowledge, instead one must rely on direct perception or proper inference. Anupalabdi Main article, Anupalabdi, see also, Abhava Anupalabdi, Anupalabdi accepted only by Kumarila Bhatta sub-school of Mimamsa, means non-perception, negative, cognitive proof. Anupalabdi Pramana suggests that knowing a negative, such as, there is no jug in this room, is a form of valid knowledge. If something can be observed or inferred or proven as non-existent or impossible, then one knows more than what one did without such means. In the two schools of Hinduism that consider Anupalabdi as epistemically valuable, a valid conclusion is either sadrupa positive or asadrupa negative relation, both correct and valuable. Like other pramana, Indian scholars refined Anupalabdi to four types, non-perception of the cause, non-perception of the effect, non-perception of object, and non-perception of contradiction. Only two schools of Hinduism accepted and developed the concept, non-perception, as a pramana. The schools that endorsed Anupalabdi affirmed that it is valid and useful when the other five pramanas fail in one's pursuit of knowledge and truth. Abhava, abhava means non existence. Some scholars consider Anupalabdi to be same as Abhava, while others consider Anupalabdi and Abhava as different. Abhava pramana has been discussed in ancient Hindu texts in the context of Padartha, Padartha referent of a term. A padartha is defined as that which is simultaneously a stitva existent, j nayatva knowable, and a bidiyatva nameable. Specific examples of padartha, states Bartley, include dravya substance, guna quality, karma activity, motion, samanya jati universal class property, samavaya inherence, and vishesha individuality. Abhava is then explained as reference of negative expression, in contrast to reference of positive expression. In Padartha, an absence, state the ancient scholars, is also existent, knowable, and nameable. Giving the example of negative numbers, silence as a form of testimony, a Sakaryavada theory of causation, and analysis of deficit as real and valuable. Abhava was further refined in four types by the schools of Hinduism that accepted it as a useful method of epistemology: Devamsa (termination of what existed), Achanta Abhava (impossibility, absolute non-existence, contradiction), Anyanya Abhava (mutual negation, reciprocal absence), and Pragavasa (prior, antecedent non-existence). Topic: Sabda. 
Sabda, sabda means relying on word, testimony of past or present reliable experts. Haryana explains sabda pramana as a concept which means reliable expert testimony. The schools of Hinduism which consider it epistemically valid suggest that a human being needs to know numerous facts, and with the limited time and energy available, he can learn only a fraction of those facts and truths directly. He must rely on others, his parent, family, friends, teachers, ancestors and kindred members of society to rapidly acquire and share knowledge and thereby enrich each other's lives. This means of gaining proper knowledge is either spoken or written, but through sabda words. The reliability of the source is important, and legitimate knowledge can only come from the sabda of reliable sources. The disagreement between the schools of Hinduism has been on how to establish reliability. Some schools, such as Karvaka, state that this is never possible, and therefore sabda is not a proper pramana. Other schools debate means to establish reliability. Topic. Relation to Vedanta school An interesting feature of the Mimamsa school of philosophy is its unique epistemological theory of the intrinsic validity of all cognition as such. It is held that all knowledge is ipso facto true skt, svata Thus, what is to be proven is not the truth of a cognition, but its falsity. The Mimamsakas advocate the self-validity of knowledge both in respect of its origin and ascertainment Not only did the Mimamsakas make the very great use of this theory to establish the unchallengeable validity of the Vedas, but later Vedantists also drew freely upon this particular Mimamsa contribution. Topic. Metaphysics and beliefs The core tenets of Purva Mimamsa are ritualism anti-asceticism and anti-mysticism. The central aim of the school is elucidation of the nature of Dharma, understood as a set ritual obligations and prerogatives to be performed properly. Topic. Atheism Mimamsa theorists decided that the evidence allegedly proving the existence of God was insufficient. They argue that there was no need to postulate a maker for the world, just as there was no need for an author to compose the Vedas or a god to validate the rituals. Mimamsa argues that the gods named in the Vedas have no existence apart from the mantras that speak their names. To that regard, the power of the mantras is what is seen as the power of gods. Topic. Dharma. Dharma as understood by Purva Mimamsa can be loosely translated into English as virtue, morality, or duty. The Purva Mimamsa school traces the source of the knowledge of Dharma neither to sense experience nor inference, but to verbal cognition i.e. knowledge of words and meanings according to Vedas. In this respect it is related to the Naya school, the latter, however, accepts only four sources of knowledge pramana as valid. The Purva Mimamsa school held Dharma to be equivalent to following the prescriptions of the Samhitas and their Brahmana commentaries relating the correct performance of Vedic rituals. Seen in this light, Purva Mimamsa is essentially ritualist orthopraxy, placing great weight on the performance of karma or action as enjoined by the Vedas. Topic. Relation to Vedanta Emphasis of Yanak Karmakandas in Purva Mimamsa is erroneously interpreted by some to be in opposition to Jnanakanda of Vedanta and Upanishads. Purva Mimamsa does not discuss topics related to Jnanakanda, such as salvation but it never speaks against Moksha. Vedanta quotes Jaimini's belief in Brahman as well as in Moksha, in Atara Mimamsa or Vedanta 4.4.5-7, Bhadarayana cites Jaimini as saying, The Mukta Purusa is united with the Brahman as if it were like the Brahman, because descriptions in Sruti etc. prove so. In Vedanta 1.2.28, Bhadarayana cites Jaimini as saying that, There is no contradiction in taking Vaishvanara as the supreme Brahman. In 1.2.31, Jaimini is again quoted by Bhadarayana as saying that the Nirguna attribute less Brahman can manifest itself as having a form. In 4.3.12, Bhadarayana again cites Jaimini as saying that the Mukta Purusha attains Brahman. In Purva Mimamsa too, Jaimini emphasizes the importance of faith in an attachment to the omnipotent supreme being whom Jaimini calls 
the omnipotent pradhana, the main Purva Mimamsa 6.3.1, Sarvasaktau Pravarti Syat Tathaputapadisat, Sarvasaktau Pravarti Syat Tathaputapadisat. The term Upadisa here means instructions of the Sastras as taught. We should tend towards the omnipotent Supreme Being. In the context of Purva Mimamsa 6.3.1 shown above, next two sutras become significant, in which this omnipotent being is termed as Pradhana, and keeping away from him is said to be a dosa. Hence all beings are asked to get related. Abhisambandat. In Tadakarmani ca dosas tasmat tato visesa syat pradhanenabhisambandat, Jaimani 6, 3.3 to the omnipotent main being. API vapi ekadis syat pradhane hi arthanervertir gunamatram itarat tadarthat vat, Jaimani 6, 3.2. Karma Mimamsa supports the Vedas, and R. G. Veda says that one truth is variously named by the sages. It is irrelevant whether we call him as Pradhana or Brahman or Vaishvanara or Shiva or God. History The school's origins lie in the scholarly traditions of the final centuries BCE, when the priestly ritualism of Vedic sacrifice was being marginalized by Buddhism and Vedanta. To counteract this challenge, several groups emerged dedicated to demonstrating the validity of the Vedic texts by rigid formulation of rules for their interpretation. The school gathers momentum in the Gupta period with Sabara, and reaches its apex in the 7th to 8th centuries with Kumarila Bhatta and Prabhakara. The school for some time in the early Middle Ages exerted near dominant influence on learned Hindu thought, and is credited as a major force contributing to the decline of Buddhism in India, but it has fallen into decline in the High Middle Ages and today is all but eclipsed by Vedanta. Mimansa texts The foundational text for the Mimamsa school is the Purva Mimamsa Sutras of Jaimini ca. 5th to 4th century BCE. A major commentary was composed by Sabara in ca. the 1th century BC. The school reaches its height with Kumarila Bhatta and Prabhakara, Florida, ca. 700 CE. Both Kumarila Bhatta and Prabhakara along with Marari, whose work is no more extant, have written extensive commentaries on Sabara's Mimamsa Sutrabasium. Kumarila Bhatta, Mandana Misra, Parthasarathi Misra, Sukarita Misra, Ramakrishna Bhatta, Madhava Subhudini, Sankara Bhatta, Kursnayajvan, Anantadeva, Gaga Bhatta, Raghavendra Tirtha, Vijayendra Tirtha, Apaya Dikshitar, Peruthir Krishna Sastri, Mahomahapadaya Sri Ramsubha Sastri, Sri Venkatsubha Sastri, Sri A. Chinaswami Sastri, Senjalipuram Vaidyanatha Dikshitar were some of Mimansa scholars. The Mimamsa Sutra of Jaimini c. 3rd century BCE has summed up the general rules of Naya for Vedic interpretation. The text has twelve chapters, of which the first chapter is of philosophical value. The commentaries on the Mimamsa Sutra by Bhartramitra, Bhavadasa, Hari and Upavarsa are no more extant. Sabara c. 1st century BCE is the first commentator of the Mimamsa Sutra, whose work is available to us. His Basya is the basis of all later works of Mimamsa. Kumarila Bhatta 7th century CE, the founder of the first school of the Mimamsa commented on both the Sutra and its Sabara Basya. His treatise consists of three parts, the Slokavartika, the Tantravartika and the Tuptika. Mandana Misra 8th century CE was a follower of Kumarila, who wrote Vitavivaka and Mimamsa Nukramani. There are several commentaries on the works of Kumarila. Sukarita Misra wrote a Kasika commentary on the Slokavartika. Sumsvara Bhatta wrote Nyayasuda, also known as Ranaka, a commentary on the Tantravartika. Parthasarathi Misra wrote Nyayaratnakara 1300 CE, another commentary on the Slokavartika. He also wrote Sastradipika, an independent work on the Mimamsa and Tantraratna. Venkata Dikshita's Vartikabharanya is a commentary on the Tuptika. Prabhakara 8th century CE, the originator of the second school of the Mimamsa wrote his commentary Burhati on the Sabara Basya, Salakanathas or Juvamala 9th century CE is a commentary on the Burhati. His Prakaranapanzika is an independent work of this school and the Parisista is a brief explanation of the Sabara Basya. Bhavanathas Nyavivaka deals with the views of this school in details. The founder of the third school of the Mimamsa was Marari, whose works have not reached us. 
Apadeva 17th century wrote an elementary work on the Mimamsa, known as Mimamsanyaya Prakasa or Apadevi. Arthasamgraha of Laugaxi Bhaskara is based on the Apadevi. Vedanta Desika's Sesvara Mimamsa was an attempt to combine the views of the Mimamsa and the Vedanta schools. See also References Bibliography Daniel Arnold of Intrinsic Validity, A Study on the Relevance of Purva Mimamsa. Philosophy East and West. University of Hawaii Press. 51 26-53. 10.1353.pu.2001.0002. JSTOR 1400034. Daniel Arnold Buddhists, Brahmins, and Belief, Epistemology in South Asian Philosophy of Religion. Columbia University Press. ISBN 978-0-231-13281-7. Francis X. Clooney What's a God? The Quest for the Right Understanding of Devada in Brahmanical Ritual Theory Mimamsa. International Journal of Hindu Studies. Springer, 1, 2, 337 to 385. DOI 10.1007 per seconds 11407-997005X. JSTOR 20106477. Lars Goller, 1995. Wart und Text Bei Kumarila Bata, Studie zur Mittelalterlichen Indischen Sprechphilosophie und Hermeneutik. Europäische Hochschulschriften. Rehi 20, Philosophy, Vol. 468. Peter Lang. Prasad, Hari Shankar The Context Principle of Meaning in Prabhakara Mimamsa. Philosophy East and West. University of Hawaii Press. 44 317–346. doi, 10.2307, 1399597. JSTOR 1399597. P.T. Raju. Structural Depths of Indian Thought. State University of New York Press. ISBN 978 0 88706 139 4. Shyam Ranganathan. Ethics and the History of Indian Philosophy. Mudalal Banarsidas. ISBN 978-81-208-3193-3. J. F. Stahl 1976. Sanskrit Philosophy of Language. In Hermann Parrott. History of Linguistic Thought and Contemporary Linguistics. Walter de Gruyter. pp. 102-136. ISBN 978-3-11-005818-5. Further reading Mahesh Chandra Nayaratna Bhattacharya, ed. 1889. The Mimansa Darsana Bibliotheca Indica. Baptist Mission Press. Chatterjee, Satischandra, Dada, Durendramoan An Introduction to Indian Philosophy 8th reprint ed. Calcutta, University of Calcutta. Mueller, Max Six Systems of Indian Philosophy, Samkhya and Yoga, Naya and Vaisashika. Calcutta, Susil Gupta India, Ltd. ISBN 0-7661-4296-5. Reprint edition, originally published under the title of The Six Systems of Indian Philosophy. Radhakrishnan, S. Moore, C. A. A Sourcebook in Indian Philosophy. Princeton. ISBN 0-691-01958-4. Ramaswamy Shastri, R.A. A Short History of the Purva Mimamsa Shastra. Animalai University Sanskrit Series No. 3. Potter, Carl H. Encyclopedia of Indian Philosophies, Vol. 16, Philosophy of Purva Mimamsa. Calcutta, Mutilal Barnasidas. Verporten, Jean Marie. Mimamsa Literature A History of Indian Literature. Otto Harisovitz Verlag. ISBN 978-3447026765.
Zimmer, Heinrich 1951. Philosophies of India. New York, New York, Princeton University Press. ISBN 0-691-01758-1. Ballingen Series 26, edited by Joseph Campbell. Topic. External links The Mimamsa Sutras of Jaimini Introduction to Purva Mimamsa G. Ja Translator, Asiatic Society of Bengal Complete lectures on Purva Mimamsa Sutras of Jaimini at Shastranethralaya S. Srikanta Sastri, The Logical System of Madhvacharya, published in Pune Oriental Series, No. 75, A Volume of Studies in Indology, presented to P. V. Kane on his 60th birthday.